the Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, all nations. For great is his steadfast love toward us. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. The epistle is from Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in him? Do you not know that all of us have, who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel and we sing the Alleluia's. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descended on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my beloved son, with you I'm well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Please be seated and we invite the children to come forward. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ today as we celebrate his baptism. Which, of course, means that we have moved straight out of the season of Christmas, you know, Christmas decorations notwithstanding, uh, and have moved fully on into the season of Epiphany. Now, I've always found it fairly ironic that we have Epiphany during the darkest time of the year. Today, we will only have nine hours and 44 minutes of sunlight, even really bad sunlight like it is outside while it's raining. But still, this is a full five hours shorter than we're going to have on this date in June. I think it's ironic because during this time of darkness in Epiphany, in Epiphany, we celebrate how the Lord turns on the lights. That is, he reveals to us just who Jesus is. At the same time, this is incredibly appropriate, too. Because there is a lot of darkness out there in the world about who Jesus is. Uh, a recent book that has an exceedingly engaging title called Barna Trends 2017 
uh, details the religious beliefs of many Americans. Uh, according to this uh, book, while most Americans would agree that Jesus is a real person, only just over half of Americans believe that Jesus is God. The rest of them believe that he is some sort of religious leader, like Muhammad or Buddha, but he is certainly an ordinary human just like us who has sins just like us. And the bad news is, is that the younger the crowd gets, the worse that percentage is. And so we see there is actually a need for a continual epiphany. We don't just need the Holy Spirit to turn the lights on for us, but like Motel 6, we need the Holy Spirit to leave the light on for us. We need the Holy Spirit to be like a pole light in the farmyard, shining its incredibly bright light all throughout the night. In order for this to happen, though, we need to go where it is that our Heavenly Father, where the Holy Spirit, rather, promises to work. And where he promises to work is right over here, in the Word. It's in those Spirit-given accounts and testimonies of the men who saw it happen that we need to go to so that the Holy Spirit can continue to form in us our view of who Jesus is. And in his account of the baptism, Mark tells us exactly who Jesus is. Jesus is the Son of God, the beloved Son of God, with whom he is well pleased, and the one who has received the Spirit. And he also tells us exactly what Jesus is here to do. Namely, he is to baptize with the Spirit. Now it's time to unpack that a little bit. Right? So Jesus is the Son of God. Yes, this means that he is the second person of the Trinity, the eternal Son of God, through whom all things that exist have their creation. But it's more than that. You see, as Jesus being the Son of God, this also speaks to what he does. Namely, that he is always and ever obedient to his Father. Now, all the sons out there, which is every male in this congregation, will be able to tell you there are times when they're less than obedient to their Father. Right? Sometimes they're just plain rebellious to their fathers and don't always listen to them. Is that the case? Yeah, certainly. This is to say that there's a disconnect between our identity and what we do. But this is not the case with Jesus. Who he is as the Son of God is completely in sync with his actions. In other words, he's without sin. He's 100% dedicated to carrying out the Father's plan and will for his life. And the Father's will and plan for his life has everything to do with what Jesus was anointed with in his baptism, the Holy Spirit. Again, to, to hear what John the Baptist said, he, that is Jesus, will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now more than just a reference to our baptism, this speaks to in, uh, the entirety of Jesus' work that he gushes forth the Holy Spirit, and through his work, the Holy Spirit washes everything. And this baptism with the Holy Spirit actually takes concrete shape just immediately after the baptism of Jesus. Because immediately after that, the Holy Spirit casts Jesus out in the wilderness to take the fight to Satan. It says to him, says, right? Against Satan for us fights the valiant one whom God himself elected means that Jesus is the Christ. He's God's elected one, whose job it is to push back the spirit of death, decay, and darkness, and to fill up that vacuum with the Holy Spirit, who is Lord, life giver, and light. And all throughout his ministry, that is exactly what he is doing. So Jesus baptizes with the Holy Spirit as he heals the diseased, as he exercises the demoniac as he uplifts the downcast, as he forgives the debtor, as he raises the dead. So I want you guys to see that it's all the same. Baptizing with the Holy Spirit, the gospel of, of God and the kingdom of God are all talking about the exact same thing. It's the work of Jesus as the Christ. The will of our Heavenly Father to restore creation to what it should be through his Son. And that work continues all the way to the cross. 
for there at the cross. The obedient Son of God, not my will, but yours be done. Right there, the Son of God pours out his lifeblood and gives up his spirit so that that spirit might pour out on all people. Truly in his death, his work takes on cosmic proportions. For after Jesus rises from the dead, he breathes out that spirit onto his apostles, empowering them to forgive sins and to proclaim the gospel. In other words, empowers them to give that spirit. So yeah, the baptism of Jesus shows us exactly who he is. That he is the ever-obedient Son of God who has come to baptize with the Holy Spirit. And the fact that here, at his baptism at the River Jordan, he begins his ministry. To do this work tells us everything about our baptism. To say it this way, when we know who Jesus is and what he has come to do, we know better about who we are and what we are to do. You see, Jesus, through his servants, baptizes us with the Holy Spirit in our own baptisms, as we just saw just a moment ago. And the Spirit does in each one of us as he did all throughout Jesus' ministry. He pushes back the spirit of darkness and fills us with the Holy Spirit of light. This is what St. Paul gets at in Romans chapter 6. Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death. That is, we have died with Christ. So that we might also be united in a resurrection like his. And we might walk in newness of life. At your baptism, the Holy Spirit kills in you everything that is evil and uplifts a brand new person so that when you come up from that water, no matter how much water was used, the same thing happens. The Heavenly Father looks down from heaven and says, You are my beloved child, with whom I am well pleased. And so you say, because you are baptized, we can say for certain who we are. God's own child, I can gladly say it. I am baptized into Christ. But the thing is, the Spirit doesn't just turn you into a child of God. He begins to fold you, mold you, shape you into the child of God, namely Jesus Christ. Now, this doesn't mean that once we get baptized, we all start morphing and turning into first century Palestinian Jewish males. That'd be a little weird, and it's also not true. But what he does is he shapes us and forms us so that our lives take on the pattern of Christ's life. To say it another way, he makes us Christians. Little Christ, whose now life's purpose it is to fill God's purpose and plans in our own lives. So what is God's plan and will for you? Now, this actually isn't all that mysterious, but it can be wonderfully joyful and surprising. God's will for you as a Christian, as a little Christ, is not the same as it was for Jesus to be the Savior of the world, right? The world already has a Savior. It doesn't need another one, and you aren't it. Thank God. Thank God I'm not it either. What God the Father's plan for your life is to baptize every single one of your relationships so that they become conduits through which the Holy Spirit can work. So as you work faithfully, day in and day out, as you remain faithful to your spouse, as you are a good neighbor, as you bring your children up in the instruction of the Lord, bringing them to worship in Sunday school, and leading them in family devotions on a nightly basis, it's through these things that the Holy Spirit can blow open opportunities for us to bring people to where he works through the word. It can be as simple as, hey, why don't you come join me at worship? And then God willing, they too can become children of God. The Lord knows that none of us do this perfectly, myself included. I am far from the perfect husband, father, pastor. I can be mean, short-tempered, 
lazy. But the fact that all of us have a similar struggle, maybe not that struggle, shows us something about ourselves. It shows us that what the Holy Spirit did in the life of Jesus, he also does to us, namely casts us into conflict to say, with Satan. Every Christian has a bullseye on their back. Being baptized means conflict. As children of our Father who art in heaven, our callings will lead us into temptation. And let's not kid ourselves. The devil is no slouch. He's vicious. He's cruel. He's going to use every trick in the book, and it is a fight to the death. How important it is, then, for us to gather together as Christians and to support one another and pray for one another. How important it is for us to do that to our brand new baby sisters in Christ, Lorelai and Megan, that we support them, we support each other, that we gather together for the study of the word because we are at war. And it won't work to just avoid our, and avoid all human contact and leave the world and to go into isolation because the war isn't so much out there, but it's inside here. Inside our hearts and souls is where we struggle against Satan. To say no to sin and to follow God's plan for our lives. And just as Jesus' struggle took him to the cross, so ours comes with the cross as well. So as the Holy Spirit forms you and shapes you into the people that he wants you to be more Christ-like, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt as you start to let your tongue feel your sharp teeth rather than your loved ones feel your sharp tongue. It's going to hurt a little bit as you give up what is most precious in your own mind and heart. And I know for many people my age and my generation, it's time. It's going to hurt as you throw away what you cherish, namely revenge and getting even with people and seeing them punish and instead forgiving. It's going to hurt as you step on the throat of your own pride and beg for forgiveness from those you've wronged and from God. Forgiveness that you most certainly will receive. But the thing is, we know that that struggle is worth it. Because that is all part of the Holy Spirit's continual process and work in shaping us and molding us into Christ Jesus. And that work will reach its final culmination and end when we are joined to his resurrection. And on that day, the Lord and giver of life, the Holy Spirit, will give us a life that never ends, but the struggle most certainly will and on that day, it will be an absolute joy to do what our Heavenly Father wants. And who we are as children of God will be entirely in sync with what we do just as it is now for Christ. And it's for this end that Jesus was baptized at the River Jordan to show himself not only in truth, but also indeed to be the obedient Son of God who came to baptize you with the Holy Spirit so that you might be the children of God called to walk in newness of life. And may he who began this good work in us bring it to completion at the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.